Hey Mustangs, in this video we're going to be reviewing the law of independent assortment and gene linkage. So in order to really understand gene linkage, you need to understand the law of independent assortment first. So we're going to use this as an example here. So in fruit flies, gray body color is dominant to black. Normal wing type is dominant to vestigial, which is bent wing type. And we're going to say that we're going to have a heterozygous fly, a fly that is heterozygous for these traits. So we're going to say big G is for the gray body, and we'll use big G because it's dominant. Little g will be for the black color body, and it's heterozygous. And then for the wing type, we're going to say big N for the normal wing type, little n for vestigial. Okay, so this is clearly going to be a fly that has a gray body with normal wing type, but they're heterozygous. They carry the recessive alleles. Now, when we look at this, if we were going to do a dihybrid cross, we'd say, oh, there's possible combinations of what this fly can pass on. So we'd say, oh, this big G can go with that big N, or this big G can go with that little N. This G can go with that big N, this little G can go with that little N. And so we say the possible combinations. What we're really doing here is the law of independent assortment. Um, so law of independent assortment is something that happens during meiosis. And what we have to do here to really understand it is look at chromosomes. So let's say these two traits, these two genes, are found in different chromosomes. So let's say we have one with a big G and one with a little g, which is what the fly has. And then the other one is big N, little n. Okay. Now when this fly goes to make its gametes, I'm just going to use generic circles for the gametes here, we know that this big G can wind up with the big N. That's law of independent assortment. That's one possible combination. We also know that this big G can wind up with a little n, law of independent assortment. Other possibility, this little g with this big n, or this little g with this little n. So right there, we just demonstrated the law of independent assortment. And this is if these two genes are on two separate chromosomes. Now this is important to understand because in linked genes, the genes are not on different chromosomes. They're on the same chromosome. And that's going to change the rules for how inheritance plays out. And that's important with gene linkage. It changes the rules of how these genes will be inherited. Um, a few more slides on background information first, so a little bit more on background information in order to get linked genes. So there's different types of offspring. Um, when we're comparing the offspring to the parents, um, some are what are known as parental types. So parental types are offspring that look like one of the parents. So if the parent is gray with normal wings, then an offspring that is gray with normal wings would be considered a parental type. Then there's recombinants. So recombinants, let's say both parents are gray with normal wings, but then all of a sudden you have a offspring that is black with vestigial wings. It looks like neither parent, we would call it a recombinant. Okay? So again, offspring that look like parents are parental types. A recombinants are those that don't look like either parent based on the traits that you're comparing. So here's the definition for linked genes. This is an important one. Linked genes are genes that are located on the same chromosome and tend to be inherited together. So let's take our previous example here. If these were linked genes, this is one gene, this represents another gene here. If they were linked, they would be on the same chromosome. So it would be like big G here, big N here, little g here, little n here, something like that. So the two different genes, this is one gene, here's the other, are actually on the same chromosome. That's what linked genes are. So they're found on the same chromosome. Now how close they are together, how far they are apart, is really important for determining what's going on with linked genes. There's a way to find out if genes are linked, and that's called the recombinant frequency. So it's a calculation used to see that the what are the likelihood that the genes that we're looking at are on the same chromosome together. Um, so the formula for this is the recombinant frequency equals number of recombinants
sorry for the messy writing, divided by the total offspring. So a number of, uh, actually let's change it. I like it better saying like this, number of recombinant offspring divided by total offspring times 100. And that will get you the recombinant frequency. Okay. So we're going to do a problem to see how the recombinant frequency can be used to determine if genes are on the same chromosome and they will not follow the law of independent assortment. Alright, so here's our example. In fruit flies, gray body color is dominant to black. Normal wing type is dominant to vestigial, so it should seem familiar to you. Now we're going to say cross a purebred gray normal with a purebred black vestigial. So basically what we're looking at here is that uh, for one parent, uh, we have a big G, big G, big N, big N. And the other parent is little G, little G, so gray, normal, little G, little G, that's black and little n, little n with the vestigial wing type. Okay, so this is one parent, here's the other. And this is the parental generation that we're looking at, so the P generation. And if we were to cross these, if we did a dihybrid cross, you'd see that the only possible combinations is big G, big N for this guy, and um, little g, little n for this one here. So all you can really get for the offspring is going to be big G, little g, big N, little n. Now if you don't believe me, go ahead and do a dihybrid cross. But you can kind of see the only thing is a G and a big N, a little g, and a little n that can be passed on. So this would be the F1 generation. Now when you cross purebreds like this um, and you get the F1 generation, they're always going to be heterozygous. Okay? So that is definitely something that we would expect. And whether they're linked or not, this is what's going to happen. Um, we're going to see that they're going to be heterozygous like this. Okay. So what we want to find out is, are the genes on different chromosomes, or are they on the same chromosome, and the genes are in fact linked? So what we do is, we want to keep the parental generation in mind. So we want to keep the idea of the gray normal and the black vestigial. But we're going to cross the F1 generation to get the F2 generation, and then compare back to the parental. It's a mouthful right there. So um, if we were to cross these guys here, um, what would we expect is that we would get a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio of all the possible combinations. Okay, So gray normal, gray vestigial, black vestigial, black normal. So we'd expect a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. Okay, um, So if we want to calculate to see, okay, what is the recombinant frequency for this F2 generation and compare it here, we'll find out if the genes are on the same chromosome. So let's say that the outcome for this, for the F2 generation, is that for gray normal, there are 965. For gray vestigial, there are 206. For black normal, there's 185. And for black vestigial, there's 944. So, what we want to look for is the recombinants, the ones that don't look like the original parent generation. We don't want to compare it to the F1. We want to take these F2s and we want to compare them to the parental generation. So, we look here, gray normal, well that was like one of the originals. Gray vestigial, there was no parental that was gray vestigial. So, this one is important, That's a rec these are recombinants. Black normal, there was no black normal but there were black vestigial. So these are our recombinants right here, and these are the ones that we're going to want to use to calculate our recombinant frequency. So to do this, our recombinant frequency is 
equals, we add these together. So 206 plus 185 adds up to 391. So there's 391 recombinants. And we divide by the total. If we add all of these up, there's actually 2,300 total. And then we're going to multiply this times 100. And what you should get is 0.17, which is 17%. Okay. So this is our value that we really want to look at here. Now, what's the significance of this? So here's the key. I'm going to put it down here in red. If the recombinant frequency is 50% or greater, the genes are far apart. On the same chromosome, or on different chromosomes. So if we look at our value that we got here, we got 17%. That's way below 15%. So that means that these two genes, the one that deals with the body color and the one that deals with the wing type, are actually located on the same chromosome. So they're on the same chromosome, and the 17%, the smaller the number, the closer those genes are together. So here, let's say, let's say the gene for body color is right here, say a big G right there, and the other one's not too far apart. So the big one right there. Okay. So the genes are located very closely together on the chromosomes. So that's what you want to look for. After you've calculated this number, you want to see, okay, is it greater than 50? They're far apart or they're on the same chromosome, or on different chromosomes, sorry. If it's less than 50, that means that they're probably on the same chromosome. The smaller the number, the closer they are together. So imagine if you got like 1%. That means those genes are like right on top of each other, like one right underneath the other, like right there. So those genes are really closely together. If it was greater than 17%, so let's say it's there, and let's say you got 30%, and you might get something like this, okay? So they're further apart. Um, so that's how you use uh, the recombinant frequency to s find out if chromosomes, I'm sorry, not chromosomes, if um, genes are linked together on the same chromosome. So the last thing, um, linked genes and chi-square. So when you do a chi-square test, and let's say you're expecting a ratio of a 9 to 3 to th 3 to 1, and you find out that after you do the chi-square, it doesn't meet this ratio, it might be that the genes are linked. So if it doesn't meet the ratio, it's a high probability that these genes are linked on the same chromosome. And that would explain why you have to reject your null hypothesis, um, why you've actually calculated and it doesn't come out to that 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. So linked genes and chi-square, whenever you don't get, even something like this, it maybe you expect a 3 to 1 value and you don't get that 3 to 1 value and chi-square says, whoa, that's way off, that's not acceptable, then it's probably that the genes are linked.